We are all excited about the final result, seeing these crispy layers, puffy buns and walls of different breads. So the shop is getting full with pastries. And how can you resist not to have a look inside when the smell is calling from far? In this video you will see my one single baker and the YouTube video creator, a complete day where you will not only see the production side, but also what happens in my life before and after the working hours. This is very hard to go to sleep when there's still light and unfortunately I have a bar next to my home so it's not gonna end till the time I need to wake up. It's so pleasant to walk now at this weather. Uh, it's like 22 degrees at the moment, but today it's gonna be this temperature. So good luck, all us walking today in Madrid. So I, I still hear uh, music, people still partying. Well done Madrid, that's how it's supposed to be. It's Saturday morning. A fiesta, descansar, it's summer time. It's Saturday morning. First thing we need to know before we even see the whole production is that the size of the place is tiny, so things get organized in a creative but efficient way. So I'm taking a prepared trolley from the fridge where the pastries were arranged by my colleague. They are covered with a cling film so they don't get dry and also keep the humidity underneath. So since they are not ready to be baked, I'm doing a first round of sourdough bread. carefully with a blade doing two stitches for wholemeal sourdough bread and put them in the heated oven. Release some steam, set the timer and move on to another round which is white sourdough bread. For this bread we do one long stitch. Doing so, not only us we can tell that which bread is which, but also the front of house members can identify the type of bread just by one glance. The dough baskets are a bit humid after use, so we dry them above the oven. It doesn't take too much time, so once it's done we immediately take them back and store aside. As this bakery is proud of producing generous pastries, the double bakes should get a medal. So we prepare them a day before and bake it as the first thing in the morning, as other pastries still need some time to proof. We do three types of double bake croissants, pistachio, almonds and hazelnuts. Each type has its own frangipan mix, but first things first, we cut them in half and then brush it with syrup. Scoop frangipan and close. After that we add some more cream on top, flatten a bit and literally dip the whole top of the pastry in the blitz nuts. Then it is a turn for hazelnut croissants. Exactly the same method, but we add two sticks of chocolate buttons and a stick of chandelier. Then closing and doing exactly the same as with the pistachio croissants. Putting some paste on top and dipping into nuts. Breads are in, double bakes are in, so I can come back to pastries. We still have some more to arrange for proving. So taking the remaining croissants and brown chocolates and putting on trays as they can start proving slowly. We physically don't have enough space to arrange them all a day before, so we do this good job now. The same with ham and cheese croissants. Later, once they are ready, we brush them with egg wash and sprinkle some seeds on top. Then we just bake them the remaining pastries like chocolate swirl or pan raisin. 
Next, we give some final touches for galettes. This particular one is cherry spell galette and we egg wash the sides and sprinkle with some demerara sugar. Then follows the savory white galette, which is made of different flour and it is filled with mozzarella and cherry tomatoes. Once it is egg washed, we put some olive oil, black pepper and salt. We also do some spontaneous pieces like seasonal apricot danish. Today we're doing a quite a few focaccias, however we change the topping from time to time. By the way, when we arrive we take them out of the fridge and by the time we start doing the toppings they are proof and have a nice stretchy texture. So generous with olive oil, we start with rosemary and sea salt focaccia. This focaccia is for sandwiches, so that's why it is light with the toppings. The most iconic focaccia in my opinion is this potato and cheese. Every morning we prepare each focaccia topping from scratch. So using the mandolin, we slice a few potatoes and season with black pepper, olive oil and sea salt. Then before putting potatoes on top, we lay a generous piece of cheese and only then finish with potatoes. Just to make sure the potatoes cook nicely and focaccia is not too dry, we drizzle some extra olive oil. Well, Spain is a country of olives, so honestly to use the prime ingredient is a pure pleasure. Finally, just a touch of salt and rosemary and it is ready to be baked. With tomato focaccia, we slice cherry tomatoes in half and generously put on top. Then of course we drizzle some more olive oil and sprinkle fresh thyme. We have two versions of tomato focaccia, vegetarian and non-vegetarian. One of them we put soprasada. Soprasada is kind of sausage with paprika and other spices. It is topped with ricotta and fresh basil leaves. Cheese lovers will love this type of focaccia. We put blue cheese, gruyere, onion chutney and some pumpkin seeds. While we do one or another job, we need to watch out our pastries that they are proving so as soon as they are ready we brush them and put straight away into the oven. We also do baguettes, but there are some bakers who are in charge of them, so I wanted to show how they do them. So they are being shaved early in the morning, then proofed and bake just before opening the bakery. Let's prepare some Bostock. Oops, I'm so sorry, I have to interrupt my video because one of our amazing baristas just came and she's preparing cafecito for all of us. Sounds like a simple thing, but this moment is quite special and I take it as a proper treat. Ok, let's come back to our bostock. So we slice croissant brioche, brush with sugar syrup, spread raspberry compote and scoop some pistachio frangipan. When I say some, I actually mean quite a lot. We cover the whole top with it, spread out and finally sprinkle almond flakes. Oh, and since I have almond flakes out, I spread some on top of the pan as Swiss too. We make two different types of cookies, chocolate with nuts and plain with chocolate. Today we are doing a big batch of plain cookies. So butter gets mixed with sugar and tonka bean, then we add eggs, couple different types of flour and finally chocolate chips. So sometimes I use the ice cream scoop to shape the balls and sometimes just scales and hands. Whatever works to portion them evenly. We reserve them in the fridge and use them whenever needed. The amount of brioche will last for a couple of days. We sell them as burger buns or sandwiches. Just before jumping on the making these buns, I want to share how we make these sandwiches for the counter. 
So we slice them in half, bread some butter, then with a slicing machine we slice some ham and cheese. We stack on top of each other and put some mixed salad. Now let's go back to the production part. So we read up all dry and wet ingredients. So we mix all the ingredients but we keep butter aside. We chop butter in smaller pieces and after the dough has come together and developed sufficient gluten strands, we add butter and mix until nice and silky. Bit by bit we take out of the bowl, trying to scrape every single piece of dough. After kneading the dough is very soft, so it has to be refrigerated overnight, so it will be easier to shape. This also improves the flavor of the brioche. We place the dough in a large container, leaving enough room to relax and proof. Pre-shave in a more uniform bowl and rest covered with a cling film. We take the dough from yesterday and prepare for an upcoming bake. Together with my colleague, we share the shaping task. So since he is portioning, I'm shaping them. Yesterday, my colleague mixed another type of brioche. So since we are rolling this type of brioche, we're gonna do this one too. We're using the same rolling way and store them for later use. This brioche is used for brioche loaves and to be honest, we don't do this type of brioche every day. There is one last part left to do, cleaning. So we scrape the mixing bowl till it's almost shining, then clean the surface whenever we touch like scales and induction and once it's clean, we can live in peace. You know what, I cannot have enough of this blue sky, of the sun. How can you not smile living in Madrid? How? It is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe, I think. A casa. A descansar? No. I know I live in a flat, but I try to grow my vegetables here. My tomatitos, my pimientos. I also grow avocados and plants. So when I come home, I always check if they are doing all right. So now I'm working on the new video and I'm writing down what I want to say, my text. I will go to the room, which is the most silent. And I also need to wait till everything calms down. Uh, even though it's Saturday, it's still some action here. I cannot do things when I want. I need to adjust the noise outside. So I finished my text and I'm going to do a quick voiceover as it's quiet now on the street, so I need to quickly use the chance. I use this cover uh, to cover myself, uh, kind of to absorb more noise, so the voice gets more clean when you listen. Probably looks super weird, but that's how I do it. Okay, that's done. Let's get some work done. The difference between working for someone at the bakery and working for this kind of job like YouTube is the time you spend is different. At the bakery you do fixed time, but here I spend limitless amount of time. However, at this point I cannot imagine my days without any of them. Hours go by and I feel I'm done for today. Thank you for watching and see you next week.